Hello there, very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Uh, and today, as of course, uh, we continue our discussion regarding the current political situation in Sri Lanka. There are political parties now coming out, uh, putting uh, their names into this hat uh, and, and, and well, expressing their intention of contesting uh, the presidency. Now, from among the many players in this game, uh, the NPP, who was considered to be an underdog uh, for an extended period of time, has now risen to the fore. Uh, many of the polls that have been conducted by various institutions uh, have put them ranking on the top. But, um, well, time will tell how that pans out. Uh, to discuss these matters and much more, uh, we've got with us here today Attorney at Law Hashanan Aikara, uh, a member of the NPP uh, Executive Council. A very good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Mr. Nanakara, now it's, um, it's of course seen that uh, there is some sort of a wave, if you will, for the NPP and for what the NPP stands for. But um, before the general public gets too much excited about this, let's take a look at how things have panned out in the past. Uh, 2019, there was a wave. Let's take the most recent incidents. There was a wave for President Gotabe Rajapaksa. People started going out onto the streets, painting walls. There was a sort of a rejuvenation of the youth, of uh, the entire ambience across the country. 2015, there was a similar change in the people and a wave for President Maithri Palasirisena and this anti-corruption drive. And we've seen this during the time of President, uh, Sir, uh, Prime Minister Sir Mao Bandar Naika, um, J.R. Jai Wardana. We've seen how these waves come and then at the end of it all, Sri Lanka ends up in a worse position than it started. So what's different this time in the wave that is, well, supposedly towards the NPP? Yeah, you use the word wave, which mm. I will not disagree or argue with. But I must tell you, this is not a wave. Although outwards, it can be seen like that. Mm. Here what's happening is the people have understood and realized that they're coming to us. Mm. It is not just a wave. Mm. For the first time, mm. after so many, I don't know, decades, decades. or centuries, <laughs> I would say, decades, they have started hearing us. Mm. Because believe us, although we have updated our policies, Mm. with the current issues and problems, our mm. core principles and policy has been the same which have been espousing from at least even prior to NPP mm. being born mm. during 2013-14 even. Mm. But for the first time, people are hearing us. Mm. So therefore, now they are coming towards us, mm. not because it's a wave. Mm. They have heard what we said. Mm. Now they are resonating with us and saying, yes, what you said was right. Mm. So now they are with us. So I believe this trend, I would not call it a wave, mm. this trend, uh, is very different to 2015 hmm. or 2019. But hmm. Remember, in 2019, what happened? We had the East attack, we had this amazing hero, Dutuge Amunu, coming to save the country. Hmm. We do not create a king with Andhra Sanayaka. We don't create Apache with Andhra Sanayaka. <laughs> right, we don't. We just sort of put a set of policy. And you know, Andhra himself hmm. says, I'm not a perfect man, hmm. but I have a team I can work with. Hmm. So therefore, I believe this time things are going to be very different. But I'll hmm. add a little more. Hmm. Some people say, how is it even possible? You are so just three mm. percent. You know, mm. how can you just go fifty percent? Mm. I would tell this much. Politics is not a mathematical science; mm. it's a social science. Mm. There are leaps and bounds. Mm. So we have asked the people to trust us to mm. give us government. Mm. Now there are a lot of researchers and data coming in. Mm. So we are innocently happy about it, mm. but that doesn't mean we overestimate ourselves mm. and not work. Mm. We will continue to organize our thing and spread our message as much as we can. Hmm. And we will not relax till the voting boxes are sealed hmm. and they're counted. Hmm. That's the situation. So, well, also, the understanding in, in, in Sri Lankan politics and politics around the world, of course, is that there needs to be as much consensus as possible. And in the run-up to an election, the best way to get consensus is by forming alliances. Uh, now, we see uh, notable politicians, popular politicians, famous politicians uh, going around forming these alliances. They're breaking away from their previous parties or taking chunks of those parties, forming alliances. There are many, many alliances being formed, but not too many of them are looking towards the NPP. Why do you think that is? They are. They are looking at us and we are looking away. <laughs> I'll tell you the reason for it. Yes, alliance politics is nothing new here or even in the world. But can you see... Most of these alliances mm. which are being formed mm. are just bogus, fake, 
because the Pohutto fellows know that they can't stay with the Pohutto anymore because of what happened. For an example, mm. for an example, mm. SJB and UMP are actually not two different parties; they are just one. Mm. SJB was created because they felt Ranil can't come into power; mm. otherwise, economically, politically, they are the same, mm. right? Same Yahapal and a lot mm. is now in two different places, mm. right? Now suddenly, Ranil is in power, <laughs> so I wonder what SJB is useful to us anymore. So let's not go there. But let me put it this way: all these alliances are being made mm. by the same people who are responsible for the downfall of this country at any point or some point in time, mm. right? We as NPP mm. are also into alliances. Mm. We are making an alliance with the people, mm. and we have always said there are good people inside the SJB, there are good people inside the Porto even mm. or UMP. Mm. The doors and gates are open, mm. but what we do not have an alliances for. Mm. Is with those who contributed mm. to the downfall of this country. Mm. So therefore, not a single existing political party we would make an alliance with. We mm. are not being arrogant. Mm. It is because we have promised people something. Mm. It is not about just coming into power. If our joy was just to get a parliament seat or just to make under the president, by all means, get all the people on board so we come in. But mm. that is not what we have promised the people. Mm. We have promised them we are going to change things. Mm. We are going to fight corruption. Mm. We are going to fight waste. Mm. We are going to change all this political culture. So mm. how can we fight corruption with these fellows mm. on our ranks? Mm. So this is the reason mm. we are not forming alliances with them, mm. and the reason why they are forming alliances, they are sinking, mm. they are losing. They know that. Mm. Has there ever been a time in this country where there has been such a debate whether to have the presidential first or the parliamentary first? Why is that debate? Because either way, they know they are going to lose. So mm. these alliances which are being formed are now mm. not with any sincere intention. But for mere political survival, and guess what, public has called it. They know the bluff, so mm. we are okay. Mm. Well, also one of the concerns, at least, that the general public has is the fact that there have been many governments that have come on this anti-corruption ticket. Uh, there have been many governments that have come on the ticket of economic revival. Uh, there have been there have been many governments uh, that have come on this ticket of social change, real social change, societal um, reforms, if you will. Uh, but none of those governments have ever been able, and and most of the times, uh, the governments that came into power came on one of these tickets. Uh, so the NPP this time around is coming on all of these tickets, or on all of these mandates, on all of these promises specifically. We'll fight corruption. We will reform society. We will revive the economy at a time when it is at the lowest point since independence. So there are those who are skeptic as to if the NPP, before coming into power, even is really biting on more than it can chew. <coughs> In fairness, I think it's right to be skeptical. Mm. The way our public has been let down. Mm. Here is NPP. They speak well. They speak nice. But how can we trust these fellows? Exactly. I say brilliant. Keep on questioning us. Keep on working with us. Keep mm. on talking to us. Don't decide of voting for us yet, mm. but engage with us. Mm. Get to know us. Question us. Did anyone question Gotabe when he said we will pay the loan somehow? Nobody questioned. Six point nine million didn't question him. That's the price you pay when you don't question a ruler. So mm. I'd say question in PP. Mm. Now talking about the anti-corruption ticket, I think the only party that I saw that was uh, Maithri's government, who said they will fight corruption, mm. and like. 28 days into the government, <laughs> with the, the first hundred days, the bond scam came through, right? But if you look at Chandrika, she came in as Vihara Mahadevi. Mm. Mahinda came to fight the LTD, and he fought. And mm. into the, the second term, he went on the basis. I won the war. I won the war, so they would be grateful to me. Mm. So I think this is the first time. There has never been mm. an instance mm. where <clears throat> a party canvassed mm. on the basis of the economy mm. all this time. If you take Chandrika, if you take Mahinda, hmm. if you take even Maitripal, hmm. because the economy is not down. So therefore, for the first time, people are now walk on the street. Everybody's economy is now hmm. because they are focusing on it. Hmm. So I believe it's okay not to trust us because we are new and we have not run the government. Hmm. But listen to us, hmm. talk to us, hmm. and we invite you to believe us. And I know it's difficult. It's like this, you know. Let's say you went to a doctor because of you had a foot problem. Hmm. Now that doctor gave you a wrong injection and it's now swollen. Mm. Now you have to fix it. Where are you going to go again? To another doctor. Mm. Then that fellow will give another injection and it will be even worse. Mm. Now you are wondering 
what am I going to do? If I go to the third doctor, they might even cut off my leg hmm. because it's a doctor. Hmm. But where else can you go other than a doctor? You have to go to the doctor. Hmm. So this country was let down by corrupt politicians. Hmm. For the last, from the time of independence, we had hmm. corrupt politicians. Hmm. So you have to find who's not corrupt, who will put country's interest first. Hmm. And I'm inviting people to question us and believe us. Hmm. It's okay to doubt us. Hmm. But if you say, okay, I doubt you, so I'm going to vote for those guys. Hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> That's not right. Hmm. That's not right. Right in the political landscape, people can trust us, people should believe us, but please do question us. Hmm. So on, on this, on this uh, point of economic revival, now you said this is one of the first times in the history of Sri Lanka yeah. that a party is really coming in or, or canvassing on this ticket of economic revival and at a time when Sri Lanka is at its lowest uh, since independence. Um, speaking about the NPP's economic policies, now I, I, I know it's a very uh, intricate subject, it's a very deep subject. Uh, and I'm not an economist. And, and you're not an economist. But I can answer. <laughs> but, but you can, obviously. Like, like you said, anyone who is... A <laughs> Everyone who is anyone on the street is an, economist, is an economist at this point, to a certain degree at least. So uh, the kind of um, misunderstanding or, or, or at least uh, lack of proper comprehension regarding uh, the economic policy or the plan of the NPP is because for, for the longest time we have been used uh, to, you know, understand the economy of Sri Lanka mostly on the promises of, you know, we will... Um, you know, a protectionist kind of system. We will not sell state assets. We will take them all towards the state. We will keep them. And then we have, when, when that kind of fails, then we have, okay, we are going to sell these assets. And then there are protests by trade unions. And, and this is the cycle that keeps on continuing. So based on that kind of um, spectrum, where does the NPP stand? Thank you very much for asking that question because I really wanted to send a message to definitely the English-speaking crowd. I mean, mm. I use the word English-speaking middle class as Colombo. Mm. It is just mm. a phrase okay. because they are there in candy as well as in Gaul. Mm. So if I use the phrase Colombo English-speaking classes, it doesn't mean just Colombo. Okay? Okay. Okay. It's a particular social strata. Okay. Now, they are the most unfortunate. Mm. Why? Whatever we say in Sinhalese doesn't get filtered to them that well. Mm. It is so why why don't fault. you filter to them? Yeah, we are, we are. <laughs> I think the biggest problem we have is that most of our speakers mm. are not organic English speakers. Mm. So mm. most of our leaders speak in Sinhalese. Mm. I mean, not that these people are pompous or anything. Mm. They're comfortable with the language. Mm. So, but we do tell them, mm. okay, a couple of the fear mongering, mm. that when we come to power, the state is going to grab all the oranges. Mm. Answer, no. If you look at our bank forum, it's there on YouTube, the bank forum, which was about last week, mm. bank and finance forum, where we say, we look at assets which are strategically important for the country. Mm. We say private sector is the engine of growth, mm. but there's a difference. Mm. The difference is we will practice what we call economic democracy, mm. right? Mm. Where people are able to participate. Mm. Nowadays, if you make a little product of sort and you want to supply to say Satosa chain, mm. unless you know the minister or minister's coordinating secretary, you're not going to get the opportunity. Mm. And in our system, you will get that opportunity. Mm. Government will analyze the data, set targets for the private sector and mm. the private sector profit motivation, they will achieve it. Hmm. But the planning of the economy will be done by us. So therefore, the first answer, will the state do everything? Answer is no. That's actually fear-mongering created for them saying, if they come, your business will collapse. On the contrary, the businesses will thrive well hmm. because we have even spoken of bringing a, a simpler taxation form. Okay. Right? Where this country is in this predicament because the central bank, on a policy basis, shrunk the economy mm. to control inflation, okay. shrunk it. Mm. But what we would have done, increase production and fight inflation, mm. not shrink the economy. Mm. So therefore, let's answer that answer sphere. Sometimes what do they say? Oh, when they come, if you have two houses, they will take one. <laughs> Honestly, we have better things to do with our life. <laughs> that doesn't happen that way. So mm. therefore, and sometimes I feel sad. Some of these are educated PhD fellows, uh, they're nice fellows. They come and say, Harshana will they? I said, hold on, serious problem. I say, let's assume, for you, from you for an example, let's mm. assume that you have two houses. You have worked hard, honest money, great. Okay. Now, when I come to power, I say, you have two houses, I'm going to take one. Mm. So what is going to happen immediately next? You're going to stop working. Why should I earn more? Mm. Because the government will take one. Mm. And far worse, when I give that house to a guy who doesn't, who doesn't have a house, <laughs> then he thinks, why should I work? Government gives me a house. Economy will collapse. So will such a thing ever happen under our government? We are not that mad. The other thing is, these JP fellows, 
are jealous of rich people. <laughs> they are jealous of people who are dressed nicely. Rubbish. We want everyone to dress nicely. We would like everyone, if possible, have a bloody black label if you want to. Mm. But what we are against is this. Mm. If you have stolen public money mm. for your welfare, mm. then we have an issue with that. Mm. Not that you're driving a Merc mm. or eating caviar. Please, by all means, do it with your money. And so, pay taxes on it. <laughs> and pay taxes on it. Now, for example, can Arjuna Mahendra or someone like that mm. come and say, JP is against them because they are corrupt? Mm. They can't. So they will have to create the story, JP is against rich people mm. who are dressing up well. Mm. So these are fear mongering, mm. which I believe the English speaking Kalam middle class up to an extent. Not everybody is gullible. Now mm. they also change because we are communicating. Mm. But they can never come and talk with us on a policy basis. No, mm. they don't come. Mm. What they can say is they will do that. They did that in 88, 89. They did this. They did that. They did that. Mm. But the bottom line remains is we are going to be the ones mm. whom the public will work with. Because mm. you know why? Every honorable businessman, mm. every honest businessman mm. will have profits among us. Because you know why? Our officials won't take bribes. Mm. Our ministers won't ask you to wine and dine them before they award a contract to you. Mm. So therefore, our economic plan is progressive. Mm. Government will set targets. Mm. There will be a massive role for the private sector to play. Mm. Massive role, mm. but certain strategic importance. Mm. State will have some control over it. Mm. But the state is not going to run business. Mm. Our government won't run a business. That is for the private sector. Mm. Regulate, that we shall. Mm. And again, uplifting the economy doesn't mean just money. Mm. Humanity, empathy, social mm. values have to come. Look at all the people, how angry they are. Slightest accident on the road, they said to kill each other. You're going on the bus, by accident you step on someone's foot. They fight with you till they get down. Our people, the voter, is angry. They are mm. frustrated. They have no money, they can't pay the bills, they can't send children to school. Mm. And now there's the heat on top of everything, <laughs> right? So they're angry all the time. Mm. People shouldn't be this way. Mm. If you think development, take Japan. Now, Japan is developed, they have a lot of money. Mm. Isn't the suicide rate high? One of the highest in the world. One of the highest in the world. Young people are not getting married. Mm. They have become nuts and bolts of a machine. Mm. That is not the development this country wants. And that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You and I are human. We need to go see a movie. Yeah. Mm. Go somewhere with a girl on a date somewhere, perhaps. Mm. Read a book. Mm. Go on a trip. Where's the time for that? Because the government is taxing you. Whatever the money you had to go on a trip, mm. you know, stay in a hotel once in a way down south somewhere, now they're taxing you on that. Mm. So you have nothing excess with you. Mm. Whatever you had, hard work excess, taken by the government. So believe me, do not fear the ghosts others are creating. Do not talk to our opponents about us. Talk to us about us. Question us till you understand us. Mm. That's my message. Mm. So, also with the affiliation that uh, the NPP, of course, has with trade unions, now there are, uh, like you said before, uh, a certain strata in society, probably middle class or upper middle class and even certain segments of the lower middle class uh, that see trade unions as, you know, working for their own welfare. Uh, they could be, they could not be. Uh, we, are, we don't have representation here to defend that. But uh, the NPP is, is very closely tied with these trade unions and there are those who say or those who believe that uh, under an NPP government um, whatever uh, the majority of the demands of these trade unions you know not to privatize even uh, state-owned institutions that are making losses over losses uh, simply so that it will serve their own needs uh, would uh, be given preference we are being given a mandate by the people to mm. work for them Hmm. We are not being given a mandate by trade unions to run a welfare country for them. Okay. Right? And we are being very honorably saying what we are going to do. Okay. And very soon, the hmm. moment the elections are announced, our hmm. most updated policy document will okay. also be out. Now, again, let's get rid of some mythical concepts. Hmm. No worker likes to walk on the road, stay in the sun shouting, hmm. if everything is good for them in their workplace. Hmm. So there's an actual issue somewhere down the line. Some of them may be politically motivated. I'm not saying no. I, I think let's 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 address yeah. the elephant in the room. At, as far yeah. as those the trade unions issues are concerned, yeah. it's a fact that yeah. all of these. Um, let's take for example, Sri Lanka Ports Authority, uh, the CEB. They've been stacked with these political appointees. The Ports Authority, to be very specific, there is um, there is an understanding or or, or, or an uh, uh, image among the people that there is. Uh, a port employee for every five meters at the uh, there, at the port. There are a couple of factual things which are correct. What you are saying. Hmm. Do we have too much state sector? Yes, we have. 
1.4 million. They have been appointed political stooges. But again, not at the highest level, where skill and things are required. Mm. But at a far lower level, where education, qualification, skills are not, not important. Required. Not required. That's where they're filling in. If you look at the university sector, mm. professors and the higher teaching staff, there's none. Mm. There, there are vacancies. So let's get back to the exact point you're making, trade unions. I'm not saying that trade unions are always correct. Mm. But our media, the governments, when they try to hoodwink the people and do something wrong, mm -hmm. right? Okay, fine. Selling of some certain asset, for an example. Mm -hmm. Now, for an example, recently you remember they went on a bit of a tour in a boat in the night? Yes. yes. They did talk about it. Yes. So they are going to tell. The mm -hmm. government is not going to tell, no. Mm -hmm. We were trying to do something nasty. Mm -hmm. That's why they're shouting. Mm -hmm. They will say, oh, the trade unions are striking for everything. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if they don't have a problem, no political party can drag them out onto the street. They have an actual problem. Mm. But some of them are politically motivated, I'm not saying no. But remember, when the NPP comes into power, mm. we work with the people. Mm. We do not work against their interest. Mm. We have promised to look after state assets. And mm. also, let me tell you another thing. These loss-making institutions, we don't want to keep them either. Mm. But first, we will figure out why they are making a loss. Mm. Without outright selling, we have to restructure. There's process restructuring, there's management restructuring, mm. there's resource reallocation. <clears throat> what we are against, without assessing why these are suffering a loss, to just sell them, just off. sell them off. I say no to that. Mm. We say no to that mm. because you take telecommunications, telecom for an example. It is not a matter of just you and I getting a phone number. Mm. No, as a part, if we come to power, mm. we want to improve the IT sector. Mm. We feel that we have massive potential. We have planned to trace it up to what at least two billion US dollars, which is about two hundred million now. Okay. For that, we need infrastructure. Mm. Now, who will create the infrastructure? Telecom. Mm. 4G, 5G, whatever the thing. Hmm. Now, if we give it to an outsider, like a, some Indian company or somewhere, then he's our competitor. Then what if he does not do the infrastructure the way we want to expand our IT sector? We hmm. are in trouble, aren't we? Hmm. Because it is not fitting well with our economic plan. No, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but hmm. it can. Look at the Hambantara port. They took, it's been seven years. Hmm. We don't have a port. Land and port. Hmm. Where's the money coming in? None. China took it and keeping it. Just like, you know, some rich people from Colombo go and buy a land in Chilaw and just keep it there. No mm. use. Mm. So, therefore, so therefore, please don't get the understanding that the NPP is going to take everything to state or they are not going to hold on to all the state. No. Only strategically important ones we will hold on to. And believe me, if they are making a loss, mm. if we can't make it profitable again, <clears throat> of course we are not going to keep it. We are mm. not that mad. But what we are saying is people are not realizing is a corruption, waste and bad management. Mm. Sometimes we might have to go for a PVP, public private mm. partnership some mm. once. In some certain instances, we might have to hand over the management of the entity mm. to a private sector. And then retain ownership. Retain ownership. Okay. So there are so many ways you can uh, settle a loss making issue. You put it this way, you are an investor. Mm. There's this state department called say X for mm. an example. If that bloody thing cannot be, sorry, if that thing cannot be turned around, mm. will you come and buy it? No. You won't buy it. Mm. Right? You won't buy I mean, Why should you invest in something that you can't turn around? And I'm saying, if the private sector can turn it around, the government also should consider. But in certain instances, we may not have the capacity. Mm. We may not have the resources needed. Mm. Then call it an investor. Mm. But NPP will go on a state by, uh, sorry, uh, case, case by, by case, case basis to make sure <coughs> that we can turn them around mm. and whatever we can't turn around there'll be some certain things like say the banks for an example people's bank and say mm. bank are still on okay now there are certain areas that a private bank won't go and open because mm. it is not profitable for them yes in a remote village okay but in that village somebody else will also have to do the bank in the farm or someone yes see I'm not saying the private sector's motivation is profit. They mm. also have a social responsibility, but <coughs> the motivation is profit. There's mm. nothing wrong with it. That's how the private sector operates. That's how yeah. it should be. There's nothing against it. Because the private sector is not charging taxes from anyone. Exactly. <laughs> right? But when we are collecting taxes, mm. there's a form of social services we have to give. Mm. Now, for an example, the moment the war was over in, 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 the, north. in the north, the first bank to establish there was the BOC, Bank mm. of Ceylon, mm. because it's not profit motivated. Mm. It's service plus keeping the country going. Mm. If you look at the general hospital, mm. it makes losses every day, every year. <laughs> you don't close it down. <laughs> so therefore, my final message on that topic is this. 
we are not arrogant. Mm. We may be new, but we work with a team of professionals who advise us. We are a political party who listens to professionals and academics who know the subject. And we are not arrogant. We mm. are a collective decision making body. We know the ailments. Mm. We need to fix it. And we have a very honest intention of fixing it. And we will do so. Mm. And on that note, uh, Mr. Harshan Nanakara, we will have to sorry end if I, this uh, program. So, sorry <laughs> if I used the word or two. I was feeling a little relaxed. So <laughs> sorry if I use some. No, that's that's, that's no problem. We, we, we appreciate you <laughs> candidly expressing your views. And of course, uh, just as all of the other political parties, the NPP uh, is also in the process of making their bid to the people. There have been several uh, elections that you have contested before and uh, that's being held against you by some of your opponents but uh, it's a new day uh, a fresh bid has to be made and uh, according to uh, what you just said today you seem to be quite confident but not arrogant also as you said but uh, we will have to wait and see because the decision finally rests with you the general public of Sri Lanka and it's incumbent upon you uh, to make an informed decision and it is our responsibility to give you the information that you need to make this informed decision and we will continue to do just that. Thank you very much again, uh, Attorney at Law, Hatton and Aikara for joining for having us me. on our program. Thank you thank very you much very to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode of Face to Face. Uh, we will see you again same time, same place. Uh, until we meet again, take care and God bless.